Okay, welcome to the lecture on coding for discrete stationary source. So, in this lecture we are going to talk about uh, one particular example of block to variable length coding for discrete stationary source which is known as Ilias Williams code and we are going to show you how we are exploiting the memory inherent in the source for doing our block to variable length coding. And we are going to use in the previous lecture we talked about coding for positive numbers, we are going to use this in this context. So, let us begin. So, we will talk about block to variable and coding of discrete stationary source which is basically this Elias Williams source coding. So, the problem that we are looking at is as follows. We have a carry discrete stationary source with some memory mu. Now, there are bits coming out from there. So, we are considering block to variable length coding. So, what we are doing is we are making a block of L length from these bits and then we are using a variable length coding to code this block length L into a code word Z. Now, what is the difference from the discrete memoryless case? The difference is this encoder which maps this length of block L bits into this code word Z i is now going to make use of the inherent memory in the source. If you recall Huffman coding or Shannon Fanon coding, these were examples of this prefix free block to variable encoding. We have bits which were basically coming out from a discrete memoryless channel. So, we were just mapping them based on the probabilities. Here we are going to use a prefix free encoder. However, the difference is this encoder is going to utilize the inherent memory in the source. How? That we will talk about it. So, if we have a block length L message from a discrete stationary source which are encoded by a DRE prefix free code, where code used for each message may depend on previous messages. That is the difference here because source has memory. So, how we encode these blocks of data depends on uh, previous messages. Then the length, expected code word length satisfies this relationship. Expected code word length per letter basically is lower bounded by the entropy rate of the source. Now, we have seen a similar result for a discrete memoryless channel. We have seen expected code word length per letter basically is lower bounded by the entropy. Here, basically it is lower bounded by the entropy rate of this discrete stationary source. So, first we are going to prove this. So, the setup is like this. We have a discrete stationary source with memory it is emitting these u i s. We create a block of L bits and then these block of L bits which are denoted by v i are mapped to code words z i which are prefix v and how we map it depends also on what the previous bits are. So, i th block is essentially from u i l minus l plus 1 to u i l. Okay, this is the ith block because the first block is u1 to ul, second block is ul plus 1 to u2l. Similarly, the ith block will be uil minus l plus 1 to up to uil. Now, given that v1, v2, vi, i1, it follows that the length w i of the code word z i must satisfy this relationship. Now, what are we saying? Expected code word length given past messages. Okay. This is lower bounded by entropy of v i given past values of this v 1, v 2, v i minus 1 by log d. 
from where are we getting this relationship? We are using a prefix free encoder, okay. We are using a prefix free encoder and we have seen in that prefix free block to variable and coding the expected code word length is lower bounded by the entropy. The difference here is the expected code word length given past values because how we are mapping the bits that depends on past value. So, that is why we did expected code word length given past values is given is lower bounded by uncertainty in v i given what was v 1, v 2, v 3, v i minus 1 by log d. Okay. So, this is follows from the property that we are using a block to variable and coding to map v i to z i. And you can see the difference from the uh, memoryless case. Here we are talking about expected code word length given past messages. Now, if we multiply this whole both sides by uh, joint probability of p1, p v1, v2, v i minus 1 and sum over all v1, v2, v i, what we get is expected code word uh, length v i is lower bounded by entropy of v i given v1, v2, v i minus 1 by log d. Now, let us expand this term. So, what is v i? v i is u i l minus l plus 1 up to u i l and given past values. So, given all values from u 1 to u i l minus l right. Now, this can be written in this particular form. So, I am writing u i l minus l plus 1 given u 1, u 2, u i l, I l minus l plus up to u i l given u 1, u 2, u 3, u i l minus 1. This follows from chain rule, this follows from the chain rule. The next result follows from the fact that this uh, h of u l given u 1, u 2, u l minus 1 is non increasing as l increases. So, this follows from that okay. and obviously, uh, when l goes to infinity basically that will be the smallest. So, this can from here I can get this. So, I plug this one in here. So, I get l of entropy rate divided both side by l. I get expected code word length by length is lower bounded by the entropy rate by log d. So, I got a very similar result uh, like we got for the discrete memoryless case. Okay. Now, let us talk about a practical coding scheme where we are going to utilize this. So, again my setup is I have a carry discrete stationary source that is emitting these alphabets u 1, u 2, u i basically. I have a l block message parser which is basically creating blocks of l bits. So, first block v 1 is u 1 to u l, second block is u l plus 1 to u 2 l like that. Now, I talked about a prefix free encoder which exploits the memory of the source. So, I am going to talk about what is this recency rank calculator and what is this, this B 2 code is the Ilias code 2. So, let me talk about basically how I am, now we already know uh, Ilias code 2 is a prefix free code, okay, which would give me a variable length code. So, here we are using Ilias code to encode our uh, basically bits of data. Now, what is this recency rank calculator and how this is fed to this Ilias code 2, how the code words are generated, let us talk about that here. So, 
what does this recency rack calculator do is it computes the recency rank of what has been seen right now. What is the recency rank? So, the message seen most recently has a recency rank of 1 and then next different messages most recently seen will have recency rank 2. So, what this recency rank calculator is getting is a block of L bits. Let us say my this input was binary for simplicity. So, I have a binary stream of length L right. Now, this could be all zeros, this could be all ones or the few as zeros, few ones. So, a lot of possibility 2 to power L possibilities let us say right. So, what this recency rank calculator will do is it will create a rank recency rank for all those sequences. So, let us say I am looking at time i. So, I will see what was received at i minus 1 that will have recency rank 1. Then I look at time i minus 2 what was received if it is already not assigned a recency rank then I will assign the next recency rank like it may so happen that I receive the same bit consequently then I continue until I get a new sequence I assign a recency rank to that. So, what I am doing is I am looking at the recent past and trying to assign a recency rank to them. Now, what is my logic behind uh, assigning recency rank? Since my source has memory, I expect the sequences that are coming out are related. So, it is not that I got all zeros and suddenly I will get all ones. I expect okay, similar sequences to come out because my source has memory. So, what I sequence I see now, I expect similar sequences or the same sequences coming out for some time. Okay. So, what I am doing is by assigning a recency rank I am and then following it up by coding of this positive numbers using Elias code. What am I what I am doing is I am saying look the sequences which happened in recent past are more likely to happen now than the ones which happened long time ago. So, let us assign smaller codes to them because what I am doing is once I assign a recency rank I am coding that positive number using Elias code which is a prefix free code. So, my whole logic is okay the sequences which happened in recent past are likely to happen in the future also because my sequence has memory right. So, let us assign small code words to those sequences and the sequences which have happened in long time in the past assign them because they will have larger recency rank. So, assign them larger code word. So, in this process my expected code word length would be short. This is precisely the logic on which this Elias Williams code is based on and we will compute what is the expected code word length we can get in this case. Okay. So, this is the logic. So, let us take a very simple example L is 2. So, my block length is 2 and let us assume k is 2 that means binary. So, then what are the possible outcomes that you can get in this block 0 0, 0 1, 1 0 and 1 1. Okay. Now, these are the 4 possible values that you can get. Now, I am looking at time i. So, I look at past values. I look at past values, this is v i minus 1, this is v i minus 2, so this is v i minus 1, v i minus 2, v i minus 3, v i minus 4 like that. Right Now, so I am looking at time i and looking back, this is what I received in i minus 1. So, this will have recency rank of 1. So, message 0 1 will have a recency rank of 1 because this at i th is i minus 1 I received this correct. Looking at i minus 2 0 0. So, this 0 0 will have recency rank of 2. Then I have 0 1 already has a recency rank of 1 I continue 0 1 it already has a recency rank of 1 1 0 that is a recency rank of 3 then obviously, 1 1 will have 
recency rank of 4. So, I have assigned recency rank to all my all possible sequences. So, in Elias Williams source coding technique, recency rank calculator assigns a recency rank to these messages. And now, this recency rank will be encoded using Elias code 2. Now, let us show that this actually is a good coding scheme. And so, what we are going to show, okay, any questions on this, how we are doing this Elias Williams code? Yes. We are like trying to estimate the distribution in the recent scenario. No, we are essentially, so the, the logic is as follows. We are saying since we expect the, uh, since the source has memory, we expect the sequences that we are seeing in recently to appear also in near future immediately or, or quickly, then sequences which have happened in way past, because uh, my source has memory. So, I expect similar or same sequences which have happened in the recent past to also reappear again. That is why I am assigning them a small code word length. My this is recency rank is small, so my B2 code also will have smaller length as compared to sequences which may have happened long time in the past. And here I will just show you can see I, this is an upper bound. This is an upper bound on expected code word length. We have already shown the lower bound on this thing, this is uh, lower bounded by the entropy rate. You can see here as L goes to infinity, this is pretty close to basically as L becomes large, this is basically pretty close to the entropy rate. So, uh, this is a fairly decent good coding scheme. So, let us prove that expected code word length uh, per letter is upper bounded by this for the Elias William source coding scheme. We define time delta i as the recent occurrence of the message v i. So, when we say v i is v, so v i minus delta is the most recent past when this message has appeared. Now, what do we mean by that? If you just a second, let us go back to this example. Okay. Now, in this case, recency rank n i is 1 and delta i as I defined it is the recent occurrence. So, if v i is v, you look past on the time when you last saw that. So, if v i is v, then v i minus delta is the most recent past occurrence of v. So, if you go back and look at this, recency rank for this is 1 and delta i for this is also 1, because v i is, let us say, if v i is 0 1, then v i minus 1 is also 0 1, right. Now, n i in this case is 2 and what is uh, delta i in this case for 0 0? 2, because if v i is 0 0, then v i minus 2 0 0 appeared this has recency rank 1, this is recency rank 1. What is n i for this? 3 is 3. What is delta i for this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You got the difference between n i and delta i? So, delta i for this is 5, but n i is 3. Now, let us go here n i for this is 4, but what is delta i? 7, because this was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, this is how I am defining this delta i, is defined as the most recent occurrence of the message. So, if you v i is v, then v i mi, v i minus delta is when you last saw this. Now, clearly n i is less than equal to delta i, right, because the same symbol that you saw can repeat. 
Now, what we are saying is basically from the ergodic property, we are saying basically expected val value of this delta i given v i would be given by 1 by probability of this v. So, what we are saying is let us say probability of occurrence of this v i is given. So, we expect 1 by that probability they will repeat with that particular. So, we say expected value of delta i given v i would be given by 1 plus uh, p of v i. Just take a simple example, let us say if I have a fair coin and I toss it okay, and I ask you this question, when do you expect head to appear? If, if, if I saw a head now, when would you say a head to appear? You roughly after 2, 1 by probability of half. half. If I say probability of head is 1 by 4 and I saw a head, when would you see? You see 4 bit. So, that is what I am saying is if probability of v i is this, I expect roughly it would basically it will appear in the past at with this. Okay. So, expected value of delta i given v i is v will be basically this. Now, we are interested in bounding the expected code word length, right? What is my expected code word length? That is nothing but alias length of alias code 2 of the recency rank. Now, the recency rank is upper bounded by delta i, right? So, L2 of n i will be less than equal to L2 of delta i correct. Now, if you remember the length of Elias code 2, I had floor of log n plus log log n term plus 1. I got rid of the floors and I put it less than equal to. So, I had log of n, 2 log log of n plus 1 and plus 1. Fine. Are you guys with me? Now, I am taking the conditional expectation, so I am taking expectation of w i given v i is v okay, and I will apply Jensen's inequality. Okay, Let us first take expectation and then we will come to Jensen's inequality. So, I am taking expectation of w i given v i is v. I take the same thing expectation of log delta i given v i is v, I take expectation of this given v i is v, right. Now, what is a log function? Concave or a conca convex? Concave. What about log log function? It is a concave function. So, if it is a concave function, what does Jensen's inequality tells us? expected value of f x is less than equal to function of the expected value, correct. So, Jensen's inequality says that expected value of the function would be less than function expected value of x. So, when we took conditional expectation here, expectation of this function, conditional expectation of this function given v i is equal to v because log is a concave function. So, we are moving the expectation inside, we are saying function expected value. So, what we did was by applying Jensen's inequality, we had this function which is log function log and here we are taking the conditional expectation. Similarly, we had this log log function instead of taking expectation, expectation of function, we are replacing it by function expected value by applying Jensen's inequality. So, that is why when I took this expectation, now this expectation has been moved. So, I am using the fact that it is a log and log log function are concave function. So, expected value of the function is less than equal to function expected value. So, this conditional expectation has now come here. Okay. Are you guys with me so far? Okay. Now, I have this value of this, 
which I computed, which I said earlier is given by this. Okay. Now, let us plug in that value here. If I plug in that value 1 by p of v, so I get minus log of this and here I get minus log of this plus 1. Okay. Now, multiplying our expression by p of v and summing over all v. So, essentially I am computing basically expectation again, right. So, when I multiply this by p of v sum over all v, this conditional expectation goes away. So, I get expected value of w y. Here I have p of v summation over all v, that is my entropy of v and then I have e sum over all v p of v times this. Now, what I am doing is I am moving this, this is expectation of this function, this is less than function expected value. So, this uh, p of v summation I move it here. Right. So, what I am getting is this. So, I again apply Jensen's inequality and I am making use of the fact that these are concave function. So, expected value of function would be less than equal to function expected value. Right. So, I get this expression now. Now, let us simplify this. This can be written h of v, what is v? v is basically block of l bits. So, this is this, this can be written in terms of uh, uncertainty per letter like this. So, I plug in that value what I and divide by l, I am going to get this. You can see here basically, I put as l of h of l, this l of h of l divide by l. So, I get expected value of w i by l is less than equal to h of l u 2 log l h u plus 1 divided by l plus 1 by l. This is what I am getting and you can see that this is an upper bound I have, I have drawn. So, when l is large, so this is this plus this term which is essentially decreasing as l is increasing. So, this scheme is very simple scheme which just uses recency rank is a fairly good source coding scheme for sources with memory. Okay. So, that concludes basically this discussion on coding for sources with memory basically. So, I have just given a very simple example of Elias Williams code, a simple block to variable encoding scheme and have shown that this a very simple scheme which essentially uses recency rank calculation and B2 code is a fairly good coding scheme. Okay. Thank you.